Good morning. This is a, a very beautiful day as I'm s- sitting here looking out of my study window. Uh, there's even a hint of rain. And in this uh, morning hour, uh, it's cloudy and the blue gum trees are slightly blowing in the wind. And yes, there's a hint of rain. And uh, it's actually very cool for uh, this south coast uh, day. Uh, Let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear Lord, I pray that your grace and your righteousness will again be revealed to us today, is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. I've chosen out our scripture reading. Uh, the book of Psalms, Psalms 36, verse 6, and I'm quoting, Thy righteousness, O Lord, is like the mighty mountains. Now, this Bible text is telling me not about my righteousness, (laughs) but it's, it's talking about God's righteousness, what God has done. God has made us part of his family. God has made us uh, and, and given us eternal life, even now. And he's taken away the stigma of uh, bad. And uh, Martin Luther, when he read this text, he actually hated this text and thought to himself, uh, what does it help me? to tell me that God is righteous when I am unrighteous. But then the Holy Spirit revealed to Martin Luther that uh, this text was not talking about his righteousness, my righteousness, but about God's righteousness that he gives to me as, 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 as a free gift. So the Bible text speaks about God's righteousness and specifically speaks about God's righteousness is like the mighty mountains. Now, why the, the mountains? Why is righteousness, God's righteousness, illustrated and likened to uh, the mighty mountains? Well, first of all, uh, the mountains give refuge. And traditionally, it's been a place of refuge from danger. I mean, Elijah fled to the mountains to escape Jezebel. Uh, the assassination attempt by Jezebel, of course, failed. And then David also sought refuge in the mountains when he was pursued by Saul. And then uh, the Waldensians and uh, those folk that were persecuted in days gone by had their safety in the mountains and in the Alps. Likewise, Christ, the cross of Jesus Christ, is our place of refuge from the attacks of Satan. We hide ourselves in the righteousness of God. Satan then has no power over us. Death can no longer tyrannize us. And Psalms 91 verse 1 and 2, I read, He who abides in the shadow of the Almighty will say to the Lord, My refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. So the first reason why the mountains are likened to the righteousness of God is because it's a place of refuge. Number one. And then number two, mountains are a source of life. 
to those living in the valleys below. The mountains trap the clouds and store precious rain for lakes and streams and they provide uh, water and lush crops and electrical power. Without the mountains, uh, places would be a, a desert. And just so, Christ is the source of life, just like the mountains. He's the source of refuge, like the mountains. He's the source of life, like the mountains. Yes, we deserve death. But God promises us through Jesus Christ to give us life. Christ was treated as we deserved, so that we may be treated like he deserved. Through Christ, we've become the heirs of every good and perfect gift. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. So, the, the mountains are not only a source of refuge, like Jesus, a source of life, like Jesus. But also, we know that the mountains are vast. And if you've ever climbed mountains, you can see uh, the vastness of the mountains. We've explored the canyons. We've explored the vastness. Uh, me and my son, Lyndon, uh, we climbed the Drakensberg Mountains years ago when he was a little boy. And uh, at one time, uh, we were lost in the mountains. And it's only when you get lost in the mountains, you realize the vastness of the mountains, the grandeur to be explored by the mountains. So that is very, very important that we have uh, not only a refuge, not only life, but we see the vastness of the mountains. Those who hurry past on speedways and see the mountains, do not know the vastness of the mountains. And it illustrates, thy righteousness, O Lord, is like the mighty mountains. God's grace is vast and incomprehensible, unsearchable. Ephesians 2 verse 8 says, so as high as the mountains, as vast as the mountains, as grandiose as the mountains, Jesus is as serene and beautiful as the mountains. So when we look up at the mountains, we see the refuge that it gives, the life that it gives, and the vastness that it gives. Of course, also, uh, fourthly, uh, the stability of the mountains. Mountains don't move. I mean, I lived for six years at the foot of Helderberg Mountain. It's still there today, 40 years hence. The mountains are considered the most stable, secure, immovable, eternal objects. People come and go at the foot of the mountains, but the mountains remain. And even so, God's righteousness is stable. It's secure. God's righteousness and his gift is unchanging. That's because it is based on a covenant, a legal covenant. Before the creation of the world, God pledged himself to be our substitute and surety to fulfill all of us. And he said, 
I will reinstate fallen man into the original state he was because of what I do. It's because of Jesus Christ and his vastness. Yes, I believe in once saved, always saved. <laughs> as long as you remain saved. And then, of course, lastly, and number five, mountains are a source of division. Just like Jesus Christ. He's given you a choice to believe in him or not to believe in him. The great mountains have another characteristic. They divide. And as you drive towards the Drakensberg Mountains, you uh, from Bloemfontein, you you see only dryness and barrenness. But as you cross the mountains into Brazil and Natal, you uh, see the greenness and the lushness of the mountains. And even so, Christ also divides because those who accept Christ, those who don't accept Christ, the Drakensberg Mountains divide. What is barren? What is dry? What is a wilderness? And what is green and lush? So if we choose the side of faith and the side of acceptance of Jesus and his righteousness, we will live eternally in the light of God's love. Yes. To summarize, the mountains, like Jesus, it's a source of refuge. It's a source of life. It's a source of vastness, of grandiousness, if there's such a word, and stability. And it's also a source of division. You have to decide. Ah, oh, yes. Christ says, my righteousness is like the mighty mountains. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you that your righteousness, your life is like the mighty mountains. You give refuge. You give life. Your grace is unsearchable. Your righteousness gives us stability. Nothing can take it away from us. And yes, we have to decide. It's a division. It's, it's a decision. So be with us as we look to the mountains. And as we look, we find refuge. We find life, we find vastness, we find stability, and we find the decision to accept Jesus Christ as our Saviour and our perfect righteousness. Thank you, thank you, thank you, in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>